adoring our God, affirming the body of Christ, assaulting the darkness. Toby Bryant Ministries International presents Winning in Life with Toby Bryant. Welcome to Winning in Life. I'm Pastor Toby Bryant. It's so good to have you with us today. And you know, I just thank God that He knows your specific situation. Hallelujah. The Bible says the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Uh, some of us make that easier for Him than others, as you can see. But praise God, it is so good to have you joining us this morning. I want you to know you have a God that loves you. He loves you and He is ever mindful of your situation. It's one of the things I love about God. You know, despite His vast intellect and His complete and total understanding, he still is so focused on each one of us that He knows exactly what our needs are, exactly what our circumstances are, exactly the things that we're feeling and the questions that we're asking. He loves us, ladies and gentlemen. That's one reason that I just have such a, a joy and, a, and have such a happiness about sharing His Word because He is a God that's worthy because He is so great. But uh, certainly I'm excited about what I want to share with you today. But before I do, I want to tell you a little bit more about TBMI, and that's, of course, Toby Bryant Ministries uh, International Incorporated. Now, uh, basically, and th this question has been asked of me, are we a tax-exempt corporation? And the answer to that question is absolutely yes. We are uh, recognized by the Internal Revenue Service as a uh, tax-exempt 501c3 organization. So any donations given into this ministry are 99% of the time they're tax deductible. Uh, so know that as you uh, consider giving into the ministry. Obviously, it's something that you can write off on your taxes. And uh, But yes, we're, we're so excited about the things that God is doing at TBMI. We're involved in a number of things in addition to the Winning in Life broadcast. Uh, first of all, let me tell you about our website. If you've never been to www.tobybryantministries.org, you should go. I've had many people tell me uh, that they go and they just get captivated on the site and they just can't leave. And uh, uh, the reason for that is there are several articles, several uh, just pieces that I've written that the Spirit of God has given me that just encourage you. I, I like to laugh and have a good time. And uh, a lot of the articles are humorous, but Aside from that humor, there's, there's a lot of wisdom there. There's a lot of the Word of God there, which is the key. Uh, there's a lot of anointing of the Spirit on those articles that we write. And look, anytime you just need a spiritual or emotional shot in the arm where you say, hey, I just need to be picked up a little bit in the Lord, go to the Toby Bryant Ministries website and just read the articles and be fed the Word of God. Uh, also, there's a, a media tab on the page where you can watch one of our broadcasts at any time, and that's 24-7, seven, seven days a week. So that's just something that we give you as a means to uh, be able to feed on the Word of God whenever you want. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, our website has received over 25,000 hits in the last year. Uh, people are really, really uh, coming to the website and enjoying themselves and receiving from the Lord there. Uh, we're excited about that, over 15,000 page views. Uh, so it's, it's gone really well. To God be the glory for that. People in 90 countries and 46 different states have been to the website and visited. And, you know, one of our articles on there, obviously, is a, basically a How Do I Meet Jesus uh, article. So praise God. If somebody just says, hey, you know, I want to know how to meet Jesus, we give them the ability to do that because, hey, that's where it all starts. Life doesn't really begin for us until we meet our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, other than that, we are involved in ministry in uh, Europe. This past summer, I did have an opportunity to go over and minister in Moldova and Romania. In particular, in Moldova, I had an opportunity that the Lord presented to sit with a group of Moldovan school children and teach them about what it is that makes America great. One of the most gratifying moments in my life to be able to share with school ch children from Europe you know, that which about America is so great. And of course, I started out with Jesus. I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> he's, what makes, he's what makes America great, that's for sure. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And also, we ministered through Romania. We we're involved in helping in various places, the uh, human trafficking plague uh, that's in this earth, and uh, we're involved in that. Also, I have a, a Pakistani pastor friend 
that we assist with, uh, with monetary donations. He, has, he cares for orphans. He uh, distributes Bibles there in, in Pakistan, and we help him. Uh, something that uh, is just something that we enjoy doing. We truly are a worldwide ministry. And, you know, I, I love doing this right here from the state of Mississippi because, you know, we get a bad rap a lot of times as Mississippians because of this and because of that. Well, let me just say I love nothing more than right here from the state of Mississippi touching and impacting the world as much as we can with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise God, and we're so glad that you're a part of this ministry. Uh, also, we do on-site ministry occasionally as the Spirit of God leads. We'll go to a location and have a meeting there, and uh, we did that last year. Had a great time over in Columbia, my hometown, uh, which was nice. Uh, in the past, I've done a lot of jail and prison ministry. I've seen some of the most amazing miracles and healings in jails and prisons, just absolutely uh, staggering some of the things that we've seen where the power of God is concerned in jails and prisons. Uh, so, you know, that's just a little bit more about what goes on at TBMI in addition to uh, the Winning in Life broadcast that you're uh, here joining us on today. Uh, also, I do send out a monthly e-letter uh, where I, I just send out a letter to encourage all of the people that are affiliated with our ministry and that would like to receive that email. If you would like to receive our monthly partner email letter, uh, you can just uh, email us at pastortobybryan at yahoo.com. Again, that's pastortobybryan at yahoo.com. I send that out at least monthly, and sometimes I'll send you a little extra one in there just to kind of encourage you along the way. And again, they usually have some humor to them, uh, but always the Word of God, and there's a, there's a truth, and there's a point from God that we're making in it. Uh, so again, not trying to fill up your inbox with a lot of stuff, uh, but we just want to take advantage of every opportunity that we can to encourage God's people, because just like when the broadcast came on, our goal is to show forth our adoration for God. We love God. I love God. That's all this is about. This is not so I can have a place to preach. It's not so I can be on TV. It's not so I can go to Europe. This is because Toby loves Jesus. Hallelujah. And I, I love him, and I want to shout his name from the rooftops for the rest of my days. Praise God. We do adore God, and our ministry is based on adoring God, affirming the body of Christ. I feel like as, as a body that the body of Christ has more to give this world than any organization on this planet. But the body of Christ has to be encouraged. It has to be built up. As God's people, we have to remember that we are the light and we're the salt. We are, we are what keeps this world going, you might say. Praise God. Uh, why, how is that? Well, with the love of God flowing through us. Amen. And also, we want to assault the darkness. That's the reason we're involved in fighting human trafficking. That's the reason we're involved in reaching out to the lost. I want Satan to suffer and, and bleed because I'm alive. Hallelujah. And you should want the same thing. Amen. Uh, so that's just a little bit more about TBMI. And uh, so just know that. And listen, let me thank you all. Those of you that, that give into this ministry, I, I can't express to you what that means to us. That means, hey, you're saying, keep going, Brother Toby, keep going, keep preaching that gospel, uh, keep putting the gospel in people's living rooms. Uh, so thank you. And you know what? The Bible says when you give, God is able to make all grace abound toward you so that you, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound unto every good work. So the more you give, the more God supplies you with to be able to give. Hallelujah. And I believe God with you when you give into this ministry for that abounding grace to flow in your life. So you'll just have more to be able to give and do whatever else with you want to. So amen to that. So praise the Lord. I just wanted to mention those things to you today before we get started. But let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer now. And I want to share something from the Word of God with you, obviously. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus, the name that is above all names. I want to thank you for this person viewing today, Lord. I thank you, Father, for the specific uh, gifts in their life. I thank you, Father, for the deliverance, Lord, that you have in mind for them. Lord, the, the assistance that you desire to give them. I thank you for the encouragement, Lord, that you want to share with them this morning. Father, I thank you for their value and their quality to you. I thank you that they were worth the blood of your son, Lord God. And I thank you that you, Lord God, are looking right at them today. 
and your desire toward them is blessing. So, Father, as we move forward in this broadcast, I ask you to touch and to minister in places in people's hearts, Lord, and minds that only you can reach. And I ask you this in the great and mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want to just basically chat with you today, you might say. You might, you might could even picture yourself seated here at the table with me and us just talking about God and His goodness. But I want to just share with you today some of the reasons I adore God. Some of the reasons I adore God. There are so many. I mean, we could never count the reasons we should be thankful or count the reasons we should exalt Him and magnify Him. There are just too many. Amen. But you know, there are some things in my own personal life, just like I'm sure there are in your life, that has really, when you got the revelation of it about God, made a big difference in your life. And of course, I'm no different. Um, you know, I, I, God reached out to me initially at a time when I was down and despondent and I was at the end of my rope. I did not know what to do with my life. My dreams were dashed and I did not know what I was going to do. I was 19 years old and I felt like everything I had hoped for had now come to an end and all there was left was getting older and trying to find my way. But at that time, God just amazingly moved in and said, you know what? Your life hasn't even started yet. Your life starts the minute you say yes to me and start understanding my purpose for your life and seeking me and allowing me to unfold for you the future that I have in mind for you. And you know, that's a lifelong process. You, the rest of your life, once you find God, you're still discovering new opportunities and new uh, dreams and new uh, accomplishments, not only that you have in mind for you, but that God has in mind for you. God is very much involved and wants to be very much involved, not only in our spiritual well-being, but in our success in life and our endeavors. You know, God wants you to be successful and He gives you everything that you need to become successful just like a loving parent in the natural does for their child. Now, a parent by themselves can't make a child successful, but they have the responsibility of providing that child with what is necessary to be able to launch forth into success. Well, God can take it a step further. He can not only provide you with what you need, but He literally abides within you and He is successful through you. So He is your success. He is your victory. He is your enablement. He is your power. And ultimately, He is your success. And He is the one that at the end of your life, you can look back over your days if you walk with God and you can think to yourself, my goodness, Heavenly Father, look how far we've come. And that's His desire for you. Praise God. But I remember, you know, one thing in particular, and if you have your Bibles this morning, you might want to turn to Psalm chapter 16. One of the things that I struggled with is when I was growing up, I was a happy kid. I was happy. I, I enjoyed people. I enjoyed my parents. I enjoyed my, you know, my friends. I enjoyed my sisters sometimes. You know how that kind of thing goes. <laughs> Praise God. But I love them, and I certainly enjoy them now. Praise God. And, uh, you know, the, the thing was, though, as I, like many kids, got into those adolescent years, I started noticing other people's assessment of me other kids, uh, you know, what I was maybe capable of, what my limitations were. And I really came to a place in my own life where I felt like I didn't measure up. I felt like that so much of me was uh, just insignificant and, and, and just didn't matter. And I just didn't have a good self-esteem. And my happiness during my teenage years, dropped to a, a very low level, even though on the outside, a lot of people couldn't understand that. I was a, a, the class favorite in my senior class, and hardly anybody knew that deep down I was a very, very unhappy person. And uh, so one of the things that God showed me when I gave my life to God, one of the first things that He taught me is found here in Psalm 16, verse 11. It says, Thou wilt show me the path of life, in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So God, in his presence is joy. At his right hand, there's pleasure. 
But now let's take it a step further. Over in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, the Bible says that God has raised us up together with Christ and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So now wait a minute. The Bible also tells us that Jesus, when he ascended, sat down on the right hand of God. Now let's go and put these three things together now. Jesus is seated at the right hand of God. The right hand of God is where pleasures evermore exist. And guess what? We were raised up together with Jesus and sat with him right there at the Father's right hand. So we were sat, spiritually speaking, in the very place of pleasure at the right hand of God. Hallelujah. Now see, that ought to excite you this morning. What I'm saying to you today is God showed me early on that, you know what, to belong to Him and to be in Christ is to be pleasurable. God wants us to be happy. The Bible says, happy is the man that findeth wisdom. Well, where is wisdom? It's in the presence of God. It's in the Word of God. But because our place in God is at His right hand with Christ, believer, we're in the place of high pleasure. You know, one of the reasons that I struggled as an adolescent is because I was an athlete and I, I wanted to win and I wanted to laugh. I, I, that's two things I wanted to do. Well, my misconception about Christianity was that it seemed like to me Christians were always talking about how terrible it was the things they've lost in life. And I didn't want to lose. And they were always talking, you know, there was a lot of tears and a lot of sadness. Well, I didn't want to cry. I wanted to win and I wanted to be happy. So therefore, church, the church environment was a struggle for me because, you know, I just, I wasn't feeling it. Well, what I didn't realize was that while God, ladies and gentlemen, is close to those that the Bible says God is nigh unto those who are of a broken heart and, and of a contrite spirit. God is there when we're crying. And there's a time in life when we are to cry. And there's times of sadness, yes, from time to time. But our Christian existence and our Christian walk is to be characterized by pleasure. God enjoys his children and he wants us to enjoy our father. You know, the greatest times in life that I can remember are basically twofold. And that was when I was a child, the laughs, the joy, the fun that I had with, with my parents, with my family. And then as I got a little older, the joy that I had with my children as a father and with my wife and what have you. Well, what is that? Well, that's family having pleasure together. Well, that's the very thing that legalism and religion and tradition wouldn't allow Christians to understand for years where God was concerned. We were trying to please a God that was unpleasable in many cases. We were ashamed before a God that wasn't ashamed of us. We were guilty before a God that had forgiven us. And all of those things combined together equaled not much pleasure at the Father's right hand if we even knew we were placed there. Well, praise God, I found out the Word of God trumps all that. Hallelujah. I am so thankful that God has placed me at His right hand with His Son where there's pleasure forevermore and I can enjoy my relationship with my Father. I can enjoy my relationship with my brothers and sisters in Christ. I can enjoy day-to-day -day living in Christ. And I want to tell you something, that is the thing that so many people miss about Christianity. You say, Brother Tubble, well, we need to be in this to sacrifice. We need to be in this to give. Yes, sacrifice is part of it. Giving is certainly part of it. But ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you something. The good time is found in the family of God. <laughs> this is where the good party is, if you've been wondering. Hallelujah. This is where we laugh and we have a good time and it's pure and it's holy and it's something that we can be proud of at the end of the day. Hallelujah. This is what it's all about. Being in Christ is where the good times are. Hallelujah. Now see, that's ministering to some of you out there because maybe you're trying so hard to relate to God. Maybe you're trying so hard to, to feel like you're worthy to be in His presence and worthy to be accepted by Him. Listen, your worthiness is not based on your works. Your worthiness is based on a man by the name of Jesus that went to a hill called Golgotha 2,000 years ago and gave His life's blood that you might be brought in and brought close to the Father. 
So all that's left for you and I is to be grateful and to love him and to appreciate him and to respect him and to enjoy the benefits that he's provided and to by all means allow him to fill us with enough joy and happiness that it spills out on, on the people in this world that are so full of heartache and pain and desperation and sickness and different things that's going on out there. It's so important. So be happy in the Lord, praise God. Because I want to tell you something. With me, that's one of the reasons I adore God the most because I found out that He wanted not just to, quote unquote, be my God. He wanted to enjoy me and He wanted me to enjoy Him. Is He God? Yes, He is. And that's certainly not to take away from His authority as who He is. No, that's actually to respect it. Hallelujah. He is God, but that's also my Father we're talking about. And if you're a believer, He's your Father too. Amen. So praise the Lord. So He taught me that true happiness is in Him, not in circumstances. So, you know, with God, you know, if you love God and you believe His Word and you stand on it, even though circumstances in your life can be bumpy and the road can be rocky and, you know, you can see, look out at your life and see all kinds of uh you know, hurdles that you have to jump over eventually or whatever. Allow yourself to be happy in the Lord today because Jesus said sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. you got enough going on uh, to <laughs> praise God today. You, you've got, let me say it like this, you've got enough going on in the future and God will be there and He will take care of you when you get there. Amen? But enjoy God today and don't allow anything to steal your joy. You know, that's one of the things that, that I think about when I think about what the reasons I adore God. But also, you know, John chapter 6, verse 35 is another reason. Praise God. John chapter 6, verse 35, if you have your Bible with you there. Jesus makes this statement. He says, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that you also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the will, or pardon me, and this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing but should raise it up again at the last day. Praise God. You know, one of the greatest things about God is, you know, God found me when I had lost me. I thought I had myself figured out the first several years of my life. I thought I knew what I wanted. I thought my, I knew what my future was. But when I came to a place where I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do with my life. I don't know what to do with my character issues and my flaws and the sin that I'm involved in. When I lost me and couldn't find my way, God found me. He knew where I was all along. And you know, maybe you're in a season in life right now where maybe you've been affected by tragedy or maybe you're dealing with grief right now. Maybe you're in a season where you didn't see this coming. Something maybe going on in your life or something has happened that this just, it's knocked you back and you, you're reeling and you don't know what to do. Well, listen, at times like that, that's the time when you need to throw yourself on God like no other time because God is the one that knows what to do. He knows what to do with you. He knows what to do in you. He knows what to do for you. And even if you can't see it right now, God still has a future for you. He still believes in your joy and your hope. He still believes that you can have a life that's worth living so I encourage you, go to Him with all your heart. Don't get mad at God. If you're having a problem, if, you, if you're confused, I can assure you God has not let you down. He doesn't have that ability. He's not let you down. He's not failed you. Now Satan would love to convince you that he has, but he's not failed you. He's right there and he knows the next step. He knows how you're going to take your next breath if you're feeling that desperate. He knows. And He'll find you when you can't even find yourself. I promise you. Praise God. You know, another thing that God did for me that is one of the reasons I adore Him so much is found in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. I won't turn over there, but 
Jeremiah 29, verse 11, the Bible says that I know, God says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. The Amplified Bible says a future and a hope. And, you know, that, that reminded me that God refused to assess me based on the assessment of others. God says, I know what I think about you. I know the thoughts that I have about you. And they're thoughts of peace and not of evil. You know, maybe you are fully convinced that God's thoughts of you are shame and frustrated. Uh, maybe your thoughts, maybe you would think his thoughts towards you would be thoughts of uh, disappointment or failure. But I encourage you today, God, ladies and gentlemen, is no respecter of persons. What he believes about one, he'll be, believe about the other one. It's just a matter of where, whether or not we're going to press into him and lay hold of his highest willingness in our lives. And that is that we might be raised up by him, polished off, cleaned up, and shown forth as a trophy to the world as far as what he can do in, for, and through somebody. Praise God. He doesn't take some, maybe somebody else's assessment of you wouldn't be very positive or wouldn't be very polite. But you know what? God has an assessment of you too. And in Christ Jesus, it's one of value. It's an assessment where he believes in your potential and in your tomorrow. Oh, by all means, take his assessment of you. Even if, you know, you wouldn't assess yourself like that. Praise God. You know, it seems like when I start these programs, time just flies. But I trust the Lord that you've been ministered to and touched today. I want to thank you. Those of you that watch the broadcast consistently, praise God. I'm honored that the, that the Lord is ministering to you in this, in this way. Uh, maybe this is your first time to watch. Join us again next week, Sunday morning, 7 a.m. God bless you. Praise God. I trust that you enjoyed today's uh, teaching. And you know, it's just amazing when we think of all the reasons that we should adore God. He has been so good and so merciful, so gracious. You know, it reminds me of a scripture uh, here in the book of Revelation chapter 4, beginning with verse 10. The Bible says, "...the four and twenty elders fall down before Him that sat on the throne, and worship Him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For Thou hast created all things." and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Child of God, you were created for the pleasure of God. God created us to enjoy us. He created us to fellowship with us, to be near us, and for us to be near Him. I encourage you today to always remember that, that you were not created to give God something to have to tolerate. No, God created man and woman and boy and girl so that he would have someone to enjoy and to, and, and to have pleasure with and to fellowship with. You're not a nuisance to God. You're his pleasure. So I encourage you with that today. Make sure this week that you remain mindful of that. God bless you.